post? Yeah, on Instagram. We live. We're live. We out here. Yeah, so I'm putting the post on Instagram. What is happening? Donnie Wiggins, what's up? Yo, I am super, super excited. We are live for the very first time on our very new podcast segment, the Brain Picker Podcast, where you get to finally pick our brains. You know where everybody be like, you can't pick our brain. Well, you can pick the brain of David Shands and Donnie Wiggins. David, are you excited? Oh, I am super excited. I'm making a post on Instagram because this is, um, this podcast, we get to coach people live. Which our guests, they're brave. You guys are brave. Brave. They're coach right now. So we're going to bring them in in just one second. I just shared it. Uh, bang, bang. Let's get this party started. All right, all right, all right. I, we, we just need to jump into this thing, Donnie. Okay. Let's jump right? in. I am right. finishing my post real quick. I hopped on live and I'm telling everybody get us on David Never Sleep on YouTube. Yep, yep. Let's get it. So um, today we have two phenomenal entrepreneurs um, in the retail business. I'm really excited to get into it because uh, I come from the retail space. Let's sleep is for suckers selling stuff in the mall. So let's just jump straight into this thing, man. Here we go. What's going on, y'all? Ladies. Hi. Hi, David and Donnie. Hey, oh. Candy and Sean. <laughs> We are so happy to be here. We're so happy to be here. So we're gonna jump straight into this, but um, we want to just let you know that you are going, you are being live, and you're live in front of probably a few hundred or a couple thousand people right now. But thousands of people will be able to see this interview. And what's really cool is we'll be able to see the transformation in a year from now. So if you are being coached right now, the clock is ticking for you to use this stuff. As soon as yeah. it's over, the clock is ticking, okay? Which uh, you should feel the pressure like, yo, we got to go implement this stuff right now. So um, let me uh, give you guys a chance to introduce yourself, get your story on how you got started, and we'll jump into it. Perfect. You want to go? You want me to go? No, you can go. Okay. So I am Candy Sincerity Johnson. And I am Sean Johnson. <laughs> and um, so our story is very, I guess it's very easy. It's a very simple story. So we met in college. Uh, we became members of the same sorority. We eventually got married, um, had twins, uh, eventually got a divorce, and then smack dab in the middle of the pandemic or when everything shut down, we were deep in our careers and we were sitting at the kitchen table with our, at the time, seven-year-old twins mm. and just really having a conversation with them. And it was that conversation that made us realize we didn't know our kids the way we thought we did. And so we were so caught up in the rat race of being good providers and you know having them in activities and doing all these things that we were spending more time away from them to create the life we thought we wanted and less time with them. Mm. So we sat down, had a long conversation to figure out what is it exactly that we want? What do we want our lives to look like? And within less than 30 days of manifesting, um, TM Custom Accessories, which is our online women's boutique, was born. And so it's just been up from there. Good, good. Awesome, awesome. Well, look, I'm ready to jump into this thing, man. Um, you guys came on here to pick our brain. So I guess we'll just start with the first question. Um, what is it that we can accomplish by the end of this session that will make you mm -hmm. say, yo, this was worth my time and worth my money? What, what do you want to gain clarity on by the end of the session. So I think, um, and Sean can take the question too, but um, for us, we're just, we're just at the point where we're growing and we're trying to figure out, should we br be branding the business different as two separate businesses or should we continue down the path that we're on where everything is one business? Um, by that, I'm sorry, I mean, say, say, say it again, um, I'm sorry. Say it one more time, I'm sorry. Yes. Should we brand the business as two separate businesses or should we continue with everything under one roof as one business? Okay. Oh, business structure. Okay. All right. So I need some clarity there. When you say, should we brand everything as one business or keep it as two business, 
two businesses. Explain to me right now what the two separate entities are. So what it is, is when we started TM Custom Accessories, we essentially are um, providing handbags, uh, jewelry, and glasses to women for accessories, but they aren't ours. And one of the biggest hurdles that we came across as we continued our business was not being able to always get enough inventory for the demand that we were getting, especially for certain particular handbags or jewelry, et cetera. So we decided that we wanted to start our own handbag collection. Um, and so in doing so, we're trying to figure out if once we launch our handbag collection, collection, which we're planning to do this spring, should we brand it separately because it's going to have its own name? Should we brand it separately or should we stay under TM Custom Accessories and just introduce our own customized handbags? Okay. So for clarity, when you launch your custom pieces, you're also going to wholesale other designers. Yes, yeah, so we're still going to still provide the same handbags that we currently have in the interim while we're launching our own. Okay. Can I can I can I do you have your 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 custom bags with you? So we have um we have a sample but we've made some tweaks to the sample and there we're currently at the phase where it's in mass production right now. Can I see so, can I see one of the samples and can I see what you've been selling? Mm. Ooh, this we've never seen it. Yes, we've never, we've never shown the sample. So Sean can grab. Um, you want to grab? I'll grab. Let's go. You, you know what's cool? By the time this, like, somebody's gonna be watching it, and you're actually gonna have the actual bags in, and yeah. uh, it's gonna be really, really cool. So, right. So how are you selling these right different. now? Is it on a website? Yes. Yeah, so all of our our entire business is set up on a website. Uh, we um, are tmcustomaccessories dot com. Okay. Yes, we are tmcustomaccessories.com, but our um, our private collection, our own collection that we're developing is called the Sincerity Johnson Collection. So another piece that we forgot to add to this whole thing is right now the handbags that we currently carry on our website, the price point is between 60 and $90. So depending on what specific bag it is, it's between 60 and $90. With our collection, it's going to be a much higher price point, which is why we're unsure if it's a completely different customer base. So um, our collection bags will be um, between $150 and $200. Okay, so not much more, about 40 to 50% higher. Now, mm -hmm. it, are these designer-inspired bags? So the bags that we have on our website, some of them are, but they're not... Um, they're not like Louis Vuitton designer inspired, but they are, you know, um, inspired by other collections. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So let me see. Let me see something that you're currently selling right now for the sixty to ninety price point. Okay. So this would be an example of there you go. One of the bags that we we currently carry. It has a matching wallet um, with it, and it's one of the more popular bags. But it comes in a that's variety hard. of different colors. Yeah, that's all right. So let me see. Let me see the TM Custom. <laughs> let me see the exclusive so, sample. So this is All the right. first design that we are going to be launching. That's um, hard. Cicely Tyson, is. manager CJ Walk. Oh, that's crazy. Yes, I need one of them. Uh, Hold on. What are those coming in? What are those coming in? <laughs> so it has the pink at the bottom too. Ruby Bridges. <laughs> yes, it's gonna come with the matching crossbody, and you'll also get a wallet with this as well. Mm. That is hard. So this is a bag. So your custom bag, this is the first sample and only sample? Yes. yes. So okay. if I can, can I show you? We we um designed this based on... We're going to show you like where we got the inspiration from it for. So okay. this was inspired by a bag that we currently carry. So if you could tell, the artwork is kind of similar. Can you bring that in, yeah. Sean? So the artwork is kind of similar, but what I didn't like was that um you know it's just random words on on the you know the manufacturer bag so that's why we decided you know with our collection we wanted it to be purposeful so you know we decided to put obviously you know historical figures let me see it to the side okay and the bottom that is very nice that is very nice my only question when i look at the design right away is the shape of the bag Mm -hmm. Is it in alignment with current market trend for handbags? 
It is. So that's a Boston bag shape. And that's one of the, uh, we had some other bags like that that were in that shape that women loved. Okay. Um, we are going to offer that design in different shapes. So, for example, um, a duffel bag, a crossbody. So it is going to come in different styles, but that's just the initial, uh, the launching piece, so to speak. Okay. And what are you calling that bag? So that is the, uh, that's the Ancestry Collection. Yes. Yo, David. <laughs> I like it. I the like Ancestry it. Ancestry Collection? Yeah, that's yes. crazy. All right. First yes. off, um, first off, do you need investors? That's the first. You know, we're not here. We're not yes. here for that. We're yes. not here for that. Okay. Okay. They, they said yes, though. They said yes. So we're gonna keep that in mind. So for if for if it was me, I wouldn't. Uh, the the name of the brand is gonna be TM Custom Accessories. So that's the business. So if you think about it as like, for example, there's Macy's, mm -hmm. but Macy's also carries. They carry Tommy Hilfiger, right? But mm -hmm. Macy's carries. Tommy Hilfiger or Polo, like Ralph Lauren. So TM Custom Accessories is the store, and then Sincerity Johnson Collection is one of the brands. So that's our our brand. Gotcha. Yeah. Here's the question: What is custom? So, so the reason why we started off with TM Custom Accessories is because it started with my hand wraps, my head wraps and masks that I was making myself. Mm -hmm. So it was a custom piece. Mm -hmm. Until we introduced the handbags and everything else that we started to sell on a on a wholesale basis or you know retail basis. First thing, if we're not selling custom accessories, change the name. Okay. Yeah. First okay. thing, because yeah, you'll have people with the bag and they're like, "Ooh, can you put my grandmama name on it?" Because like it, this ain't a custom company, and it just confuses the audience. So the first thing I need you to do immediately is come up with a brand name. Okay. Just come up with a brand name. Because TM Custom Accessories, it sounds small. And this oh, okay. brand is huge. Yeah. So should we go with Sincerity Johnson since that's the name of our our bags that we're designing anyway? If that's the name of the brand, sure. I don't care what the name of the brand mm -hmm. is, as long as it's not custom accessories. Okay. <laughs> but you gotta you gotta think, you gotta think the 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 brand that is that you're gonna name it, don't think of this bag. Think of you'll have bags and you have wallets and you have scarves mm -hmm. and you have I don't I don't know uh, jackets I don't I don't know how women do that but think what is going to house this brand and everything that comes with it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got yes. it. Good. Good. So that's number one. So to to answer your question of like should we make it separate? No, we're just the, the website the website name. Well, house even those older bags because you got to sell them right mm -hmm. until you mm -hmm. what i would do is i would just start to phase them out everything that i order brand new will just be so listen with t-shirts like there's a t-shirt shots out of rich and unemployed mm -hmm. this is a um a next level t-shirt right he put his brand on it and you can put your own tag in it i don't know how the bags are tagged that you're you know you're selling now but if it has, you know, other brand names on it, it's cool. We just keep selling those and make sure everything we sell moving forward is our own brand. Okay, Until got you it. completely, but people won't even know the difference. They just, where'd you get that back? Oh, go to this website, right? And the yeah. person that just got referred to the website, they'll just see a bunch of dope bags and they don't care the transition. And you like, also have the, op the option to just name different collections. So if you are extremely profitable on uh, the wholesale bags that you're purchasing right now and you want to continue to sell those, you can name those, right? One particular collection. And then you have the Ancestry Collection, which is a custom design uh, collection inspired by our ancestors and highlighting great people who paved the way for us if that's something that you want to do. So you don't necessarily have to get rid of it unless that's the future goal for the business, the end goal for the business, but I would certainly, instead of naming all these different businesses with all these different websites, at the end of the day, it's all handbags. So I would just block it off in collections. Okay. Maybe a custom collection, but you got you have to name that something real sexy and fly because we want people obviously to go there. Let me ask you this, in terms of your profit margin, 
Uh, where are you making the most money right away? Are you making the most money right away? Uh, are you projected to make the most money from the wholesale bags or are you projected to make the most profit on your custom design bags? So we, um, right now we do about 40,000 per month and we've been there for several months. Um, I would say that it's going to definitely increase drastically once, once we have um, our own custom bags in hand because the price point is substantially higher. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going from, you know, a customer paying 60 to $90 for a bag to 150 to 200 per bag. So, right. But you still have to factor in the cost of production. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Your cost of goods. So I, I don't know that you've done that based on your answer. So one thing that I want you to consider doing is, or one thing not even consider, you have to do it. I want you to go through and analyze what your cost of goods are. How much does it cost us to produce this piece based on numbers and then compare apples to apples? Because in the very beginning of dropping your custom line, based on the revenue that you're already generating, you may need to continue to market the wholesale line just to bring cash flow to the business while you're perfecting the custom line. Okay. Good, good. You know the cost of good numbers, right? Yeah, we do know the cost of goods for the custom and the and, and the cost of um, to attain the wholesale bags. So we do know that the profit margin is going to be bigger with the customized bags, even with shipping, um, the cost of, because what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a nice box of the bags come in. So we've thought about all of that, the cost to ship it, the cost of supplies um, and all of those things. And we, and we still know that the profit margin is larger with the customized bags because of the price point. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right. Next question. Let's get it going. So we understand we understand that question in terms of like building the brand, right? Yes. And what I what yes. I would what I would do too is I would change that Instagram and all of the branding. Go get the website to that tonight. Go get the website. Go get the um, the YouTube channel. Go get go get everything because you never know where you're going to take it. The okay, domain. So we, domain. We actually everything. own all of that already. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Let's switch it over tonight because nobody it's not custom anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So okay. good, good. Got okay. It. What's next? Uh, number two is the marketing piece, right? So yeah. the next part for us is tips on how to market and scale. So we have done marketing since we started the business. Um, we've run social media ads. Um, we've done that piece, but we're just trying to figure out how to scale it mm -hmm. so that we can get into to a broader audience and a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Because we love, you know, we absolutely love, you know, our base that we have now. Um, they've rocked with us since day one, even before the business started. But we know we have to get in front of more people. How are you marketing right now? Right now on social media. Social media ads. Mm -hmm. So you um, are running paid ads. Influencer ads too, but we haven't gotten a, a return on the influencer ads. Okay, so just for clarity, you're running paid Facebook ads on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, that's correct. Okay, and that's bringing you in about forty thousand dollars a month. What else have you done? You said influencer marketing. Tell me what type of influencer marketing you've done. So we've done everything from like baller alert um, to specific influencers. Okay. And we'll get like maybe a few followers, but nothing like, you know, what most people uh, projected or or have even experienced themselves when talking to other business owners. OK, yeah. so is the bulk of the, the sales coming directly from Facebook ads. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, let me correct that. I would say we looked at our uh, numbers and we're right at like what, 40, 60? Yeah, so 40% new, 60% returning customers. Mm -hmm. um, we also go live on Facebook, so we do live showcases. And so that helps us get out in front of other people with our returning customers sharing us and trying to get us out there as well. Okay. Do you have, um, what, what platform, are you using Shopify or is this a custom site? It's Shopify. Shopify. Perfect. And so you have Klaviyo set up? Yes. yes. And do you have text messages set up? Yes. yes. How often are you sending text messages out right now? Whenever we go live doing our live showcases. Oh, just that. So are you not promoting sales via email and text messages simultaneously at least five times a day? I'm no, sorry, five days, times days a week? No, five not days five times a week. week. That's number one. Okay. Number okay. one, you have to integrate. So 
the way, and I'm going to let David chime in on this, but let me complete this thought. The way that marketing works is a marriage, right? So when you are marketing your Facebook ads, those people, what you're essentially doing the most of is collecting leads, right? Most people don't purchase the first time they see your ad. So you're collecting leads. And with that lead, they're coming onto your email list. So on the back end, it's called the back of the funnel. At the back of the funnel, we have to make sure that we're capturing those leads and we're actually talking to them, communicating with them right away. So right away, whether they buy or don't buy, you need to be sending them an email. And then you need an email sequence that's set to go to them to touch those people over and over and over again. When you're sending an email out, you always want a matching campaign. So I would recommend that you guys get post scripts or something like that to add to the back end of your Shopify if you're not using it, but you need to send text messages out. You also want to encourage people to get on your text list. Primarily, email is still great. I believe it's still at like a 30% conversion ratio, but your text or 30% open rate. But your text messages right now are at 80 to 90% open rates, depending on your customer lo loyalty. Um, so I would be sending out special incentives via text message to make sure that people are on the text list. They'll see that before they see the email. Uh, do you have a an abandoned cart sequence attached to your email marketing? Yes, we do. Okay. And is it just the generic one or is it a custom one that's sending out uh, very aggressively? We've customized it. So we have it where it goes out um, an hour after they abandon the cart, four hours, and then a day after. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the generic, what it normally says. We've customized it. We've add, added graphics to it, et cetera. Perfect. Perfect. Um, with the graphics and your email, be careful. Try doing a split test with graphics and then some without graphics. You can okay. really save a lot of heavy graphics for text messages, but uh, that's one of the, the first spam filters that most email providers are looking for is heavy graphic emails. So just be careful with that. I would, I would recommend that you do a split test on that. Okay. Cool. So, um, your marketing is coming from how did, from, from when you like launched it, how did we get to the 40,000? Was it just, we just, we found out how to run some ads and we just got to the bat. <laughs> So, well, we, we got there pretty quickly. So our first month, I think we did about 5K. Um, second month, about 25K. And then by month three or four, we were at 40. So Just, just we, off the ads. So it was a combination of ads. And we also had a very small Facebook um, following. We're very new to Instagram. but um, So we had a small Facebook following. But because they followed us just for, you know, lifestyle content, so to speak, they were our initial customer base and then it grew from there good good okay um hold on one second because i want to i want to go to the page so should we go to your facebook page or your instagram page what are you thinking i would say facebook facebook okay um let me get here what is the facebook page uh tm custom accessories tm custom accessories all right um all right so you're you're gonna have to like help me navigate through facebook because <laughs> i don't be on facebook at all okay what's the demographic while he's doing that what's the demographic of your buyers how old are they so um our buyers you want to give the age range? yeah it's between 35 and 55 that's the the highest percentage mm -hmm. and it's like what 98 percent women yeah 98 percent <laughs> women um i would probably say 95 percent african-american okay i'm trying to pull up my phone i did it earlier hold on give me a second let me try to figure out this whole phone thing um because i, I want to see it Crap. But a lot of our content is also on Instagram too. Our live so um, streams are just not primarily there. Yeah. We have a couple that are there, but not a not a whole lot. Gotcha. Okay. Give me a second. Let me. Oh, here we go. I could do this. I could do it this way. Hold on. Yeah. Bang. And we're gonna come here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. This and then that. Bang. Okay. Cool. We're lit. All right. So <laughs> where's the how do I get to the page? I just click right here. So you want to scroll up and then hit the home. There you are. There you there go. It is. Okay. All right. So we need a we need a photo. You need a photo shoot. 
Yeah. Because this, 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 I, I need you guys to see this as Chanel, as uh, Fendi, as Louis Vuitton. Okay. What does the owner of Louis Vuitton look like? We don't, we don't know. know. Who knows, right? Okay. But it, we want, we're not selling bags. What are we selling? An experience. We're selling an experience. We're selling a lifestyle. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the first thing is we need like some custom graphics up here. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is, what is a, um, um, what is a company that you all follow that you really, really like? Ooh, um, would you say yeah, Michael Kors? Yeah, probably Michael Kors. Mm -hmm. Kors. Okay. Uh, let me call, let me bring this one here to my phone. If it's going to look right. Okay. It doesn't look right. Okay. Um, we're going to go to maybe Michael Kors page on Instagram. I mean, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me just get a different look. Hold on. Bang. Not that one. I am, uh, this is my first time being a producer. So <laughs> y'all just. <laughs> Y'all just bear with me, all right? Uh, okay. You're doing yeah. great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Let's go here. Okay, great. So they have, the, it's not saying buy a bag. It's saying, don't you want to be on a private jet looking cool, drinking mimosas mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff? So I would go to these pages and like just kind of, like look at how they're putting it together and this should be the experience, right? So let's go back to your page. Let's see, let's see the experience it's giving me. This is not the experience. Mm -mm. Oh no, it's not. Nah. <laughs> we sell bags. It doesn't say luxury. Right. We, okay. we, want, we wanted this, <laughs> they just in the whip. Just, <laughs> just hang it out, ain't we? Family time. Yeah. Is the goal to sell bags or is it the what? What is our Whoa, goal? Here? What was that? <laughs> Scroll up one more. One more right there. What, what are we doing right here? Not well they, well they're letting us know. This post has absolutely nothing to do with our fashion and beauty blend. I haven't brushed my teeth yet. This is what we're putting on our business page. <laughs> yeah. So we got we gotta think outside of our backyard. What I want you to think is luxury, okay. luxury. Think of a luxury brand that you can think of. Like, uh, let's 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 actually let's go to let's go to Instagram. Hold on, let's go to Instagram, and um, what will be a okay? There's your page, and I'm gonna follow. Bang. <laughs> All right, you see you see the experience, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's go to I don't know. Give me one, Donnie. Wanna go to Fendi? Yeah, let's go to Fendi. Let's go to Fendi. And again, Fendi is Fendi is really really high end and very particular about uh, how they market their brand. Oh, oh, oh! What is what is Ron? Now, I haven't been there, but what is Ronnie's Instagram? Page? Girl CEO. But who I would look at actually for them as a target would be uh, Mia, Glam Glamaholics. Glam O Holics. Hold on, let me get it for you. It's G-L-A-M. Glamaholics Lifestyle? Oh, I'm sorry. She's, no, 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 no. She's just Mia Ray on Instagram. M-I-A. Well, I, I don't know. Hold on. We're here right now. Oh, this you're there. Is okay, a, that's the This is page. a company. This is a company. And I don't know the company, but when I come on here, they have invested in their brand to look a certain mm -hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a brand. It's not bags, but... Um, and I and I haven't updated in a while, but I sold a whole 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 lot of T-shirts. I am the owner of the brand, but who don't you see? You, the owner. Because now it's it's people. Don't you don't you want to like be a part? Now we're saying, yo, everybody's wearing it. Does that right. make sense? Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing it. So we have. Let me follow my own company back. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of like marketing 
We've got to clean it. Okay. So my, my question is, we've built our entire online existence from this is who we are, follow us. Like, yeah. for example, we went live last night and we were hanging out in the kitchen on Facebook and we were sharing with our audience how excited we were about today's podcast with you guys yeah. and what that could potentially do for our business and how nervous we were. And so while we were live, we took them upstairs to our closet and we were like, we're trying to figure out what to wear. Should we wear this? Should we wear that? And like just really inviting them into the behind the scenes of this is not only who we are, but this is how we're building everything. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that's so, great. That's great. And so that's what we've done, like literally every day up until now. So that's what all the like extra stuff that you see on the page, that's what that is. And so right. I don't know how to, in my mind, I know exactly where you're saying yeah. we should be. I don't know how to get from this point to there. And that's what we need help with too. And especially a lot of the people, a lot of the, a lot of our, we call them our best friends um, that are part of our page. They like that sort of thing. So now, you know, we definitely understand what you're saying and we're not being resistant by any means, but we're just trying to figure out how do we then transition that? Cause then they'll be like, well, what happened to our, we call it girl talk. What yeah. happened to our girl talks? Like we're not going to do girl talks anymore. So let me answer a piece of that question. You are, you can. So right now, the way that we do e-commerce, people love to see the behind the scenes of the brand. They want to see something from you and that's fine if that's how you built your business. But let me, let me start off with one thought. That's how you built your business so far. How you started the business and how you scale the business are going to be two totally different things sometimes. Okay. So it is okay for you to show some of the behind the scenes, but we got to standardize a little bit of what that behind the scenes look like, especially if we are looking to build a luxurious brand. We want people to feel great about spending $150 or $200 on a handbag from you. So we have to start asking ourselves, what does that look like? So yes, it could be behind the scenes in the warehouse, putting products together. It could be behind the scenes, picking out patterns and showing them samples. It could be behind the scenes of how you balance your life as moms and CEOs with two twins. It could be that, but we want to pull away from pizza man is at the door. We hadn't brushed our teeth yet, that kind of deal, because that doesn't make me feel like I'm investing in a luxury brand. What that does to someone like me who shops designer brands and luxurious brands all the time is say, ooh, I wonder if you know they're making this in their basement or is this like in a real warehouse that's clean? So we just have to think about it and audit. If you want to do like girl talk and things like that, that's great. But girl talk is like a, a bonus that we do this time, this day, consistently every week. It's not just the spontaneous, sporadic comment, uh, content that we're putting out. Let's really pull back on showing too much of the extra, even though I like the extra. So not, by no means am I saying you can't show any behind the scenes. But again, how you start is not how you scale. We don't get to see behind the scenes of Louis Vuitton's process unless it's a documentary. But you're not Louis Vuitton yet, so you're building. Now, when you start to scale up on your cold market, uh, cold market ad budget and things like that, you have to remember that these are people who are not already privy to your girl talk, not already privy to your family time, and we want to make them come in and feel at home too. So we want to make sure that on a marketing aspect, We've got as many professionally done images as possible because how you start is not is not how you scale. We're not scaling a luxurious handbag uh, brand to a million dollars with cell phone images. Uh, I noticed that some of the shots on your website are also not cohesive, meaning you have some white box images sometimes. I noticed that there was a layout of handbags just kind of on the floor. I could see a little bit of carpet, a little bit of hardwood. We want to clean that up. Every product outlay, we want that to look the same. So if we're showing the products with just the white leg background, then we're using that same white, same lighting, same font. If we're showing it with uh, actual models, then we want models with professional photo shoots, unless it's like a customer, our customer sent this in. This is our customer selfie or something like that. So you don't have to completely eliminate the natural and organic feel, but you do want to implement, you know, we got to say, hey, this is custom, this is luxury, this is lifestyle. Every successful woman wants to wear this. Every fly woman wants to wear this. We have to give you visuals and graphics that match that. 
Got it. Wow. Got so it. I, the, 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 the marketing and branding, we, selling the bag is a given, but now we want to start to sell a feeling. We want to mm -hmm. we want to sell who you are going to become by supporting this brand by buying this brand. Does that make sense? I want I want to yes. go through an, a, a couple of different examples just to kind of jog your um, your kind of get your brain going in this direction. Hold on a second. So this is uh, my friend Ronnie's brand, and she sells um, it's like plant based beauty and wellness products. Mm -hmm. but this is look at the thought that goes into this video it's a person right it's a regular person but it's giving me a certain feel and it's like they are invested in this brand i'm not saying don't go live but look at like the choice pictures she's not selling carrot juice but she is selling health and wellness she's selling becoming the best version of yourself. So I'm going to throw in there something about health and wellness. Does that make sense? Yes. Selling, yes. selling itself is not just, um, it's not just um, like, sell, like running the ads to make the transaction. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So one, I would love for you guys to do a photo shoot, set up a photo shoot. Okay. Because some some people, believe it or not, they're going to buy the bag, but they have no idea how to wear it. So I want them to come to your site, not only find a bag that they like, but find a way to wear it. Oh, I like the way they wore it. So I'll buy the bag and I'll go get an outfit. That's why they have a mannequin. Because you might like a shirt, but you don't know what to wear with it. Mm -hmm. And not saying that everybody dresses off the mannequin, but you want to set up a photo shoot with these different bags, the different type of women that are going to wear the bag or men, right? Whoever's going mm -hmm. to wear the bag, the different lifestyle and how they do it. So let's not just sell them a bag. Let's teach them how to rock our stuff. Because right. guess what's going to happen when they learn how to wear it? They're going to take pictures on social media, looking fly, and they're going to take pride in their appearance. Because you all don't have professional photo shoots, the people that are buying the bag aren't setting up photo shoots wearing your bag and, post and tagging you in it as much as they probably will when you start to do it following the lead. Because what will happen is they'll start to create the content for you. They're like, yo, I did a photo shoot. I was rocking the bag. And then you use that on your page. And now it's still in align with this professional look. Not mm -hmm. saying that you can't go live. But maybe let's put a little thought into our live. Maybe let's upgrade the camera a little bit. There's a difference between this. like So so look at it like we are, we are coaches, right? Mm -hmm. What if I was doing given the same information just on a cell phone not all these fancy graphics you probably say that's good information mm -hmm. but we've invested in a camera we've invested in the background we've invested in all this fancy look we got a whiteboard and it just feels different saying listen i want to rock with the brand there was mad people in the comments saying yo how how much is it to be on the podcast i want to be on that because it's not <laughs> it's not just giving you what you asked for I'm trying to give you an experience. So we're going to set up a photo shoot. Got it? Mm -hmm. We're also going to set up some content days. So content days. Donnie, do you want to kind of talk through like some of your content days and how you, how you approach it? Yes. So I built my business as non-overwhelming as possible, right? Just okay. like an e-commerce brand as a coach, especially in the digital space, I require a ton of content too. So I like to batch my content. Um, I typically do all of my videos that I need for the month in one take. So I will plan a Friday with one of my videographers and we'll spend a couple of hours uh, going through videos. Now, what I love to do is plan my content in advance. So. For me, it's topics, right? What topics do I want to teach about? What 60 second, 90 second, or even eight minute topics do I want to talk about that day? That will save me so much time. So for you, what I would recommend that you guys do um, is plan your looks. 
What bag are we featuring right now? What do we want to show about this bag? How do we want to style this bag? A good thing that you can do for a lot of product, for, for your product, is like go to a Pinterest board. Go to a Pinterest board and look at a handbag photo shoot. Look at how to display a handbag photo shoot. And you can say, you can actually create custom boards and share this with your photographer and your videographer in advance. So they can already have insight on a location. Do we need to be on scene or do we need to be in a studio? Do we need to be in a mall or somewhere else? I do all of my videos in one take. And then sometimes I will take those same outfits that I had on in the video and then schedule the photo shoot so I have some, co uh, some cohesive branding as it relates to my videos and my still images. I will typically do photo shoots um, about twice a month. And then I do my video shoots. I do my best to do it in one take. We'll block out like four hours and we'll get all the videos you know, that we can. If something goes wrong, then we'll book another date. But I am consistent. I know that my hair gets done on Tuesdays. We are filming content via the podcast on Wednesdays. I go in and I get touched up on Thursdays so that I can come and do my content on Fridays. So you've got to be that meticulous. You guys will also have to coordinate schedules with uh, models and, and things like that. So think about some of your flyest, most savvy uh, girlfriends who are fashion forward. Think about people who are really, really attractive um, for still images. Think about people who know how to rock a look very well for your video images and keep up with what you have. So a couple of things. One, you can repeat the same content over and over, but that requires that you be organized. So you want to get a Dropbox or you want to get a Google Drive where you're separating. Here are all of our videos. Here are all of our photos per collection type. So if it's the Ancestry line, we've got a folder for Ancestry photos, Ancestry videos. If it's the you know CNC line, you've got a folder for the video and you've got a folder for the photo. So it's really easy for you to pull content. And when you're scheduling content, it's really easy to see what you already have. Second, again, just to recap, I want you to get a Pinterest board and start getting an idea of how other brands are marketing and modeling and setting up because sometimes it's just about having the wrong pose and getting the wrong shot. Making sure that you also have a photographer who's focused on the product more than they're focused on the beauty or the appeal of the model. And then you can keep track of your plan for your content in something like a Trello board. You know, you can say, hey, for this one, we really, really need this particular shot. Let me attach the link from my Pinterest board so we know exactly what we're doing. And then that way, when you're going to approach content, whether it's video or uh, uh, photo, you're not just taking a whole lot of shots. You don't have 100 shots of the same handbag and not one of them was the look that you were actually going for. So create a storyboard uh, between Trello and Pinterest so you know exactly the shot. And then once you have that shot, move on to the next one and the next product. That's going to keep you organized, blocking out, you know, so, so you're not having to um, take six hours when really it just took three because we already know the poses and the look and the styling that we want behind it. And if you're not great at styling, then you want to bring somebody on who is great or select models who are naturally great, show them what they'll be modeling in advance, send them pictures of it so they can coordinate that. It's going to save you a tremendous amount of time. Batch content. Awesome. Any questions or any clarity questions on any of that we just talked about? Donnie, when you said Trello board, because I'm not sure how to spell it, I want to make sure I have it right. I have it T-R-A-Y-L-O. Is that correct or is it spelled a different way? It's different. It's probably pronounced Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O. Got it. Thank you. And I use this to organize all of my content, right? So you may want to um, organize by collection. You may want to organize by season. You may want to organize by sample. So you're never like looking for things, just keeping a paper trail or a digital trail of everything that you have. You may want to create like future boards of this is what we want to do in the future. These are sketches. These You may want to keep track of your wholesalers or your designers, your photographers who's good at this. So maybe, maybe somebody's great on location. Maybe the other person is great at the white box. Maybe somebody's great in studio. It's just going to really help you stay very, very organized. So you're not spending a lot of time thinking through the content more than you are executing. Okay. okay. 
Okay. My follow-up question would be, I think our biggest challenge is finding models. Um, do you have any ideas of how we could potentially find models? Mm -hmm. You want that, David? Ask people. <laughs> Yo, if you got, if you got, first off, if you have, like, if you're selling $40,000 a month of a $60 bag, you mm -hmm. got a lot of people already on your list. And one, I would tell them, yo, submit your best picture. We're upgrading our look. It might make it to the photo. It might make it to the website. We're redesigning our look and we want to see how y'all rocking it. We've been with y'all, like y'all been supporting us and we want it to be about y'all. We don't really want to go hire no models, right? That's one mm -hmm. way to do it, to create engagement. And what you'll find is that those, because you said 60% of your buyers are repeat buyers. Mm -hmm. they They'll come them. back to yeah. the page to buy some stuff to take pictures in to market for you anyway. Yes. The mm -hmm. second part is just ask your following. I mean, y'all on, uh, y'all on like Facebook Live. There needs to be that purpose. Like, yo, we are mm -hmm. cleaning up our look. We want, we want to be like, we go on high level, and then really push the message that there are no black luxury brands. That's right. If you're going luxury, I don't know. Are you going luxury? Yes. I, well, this this price point, although it's probably not high for you guys, it's, it's considered luxury. It is create, considered luxury. Create your own genre, <laughs> affordable luxury. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like you, you push the narrative. So mm -hmm. which brings me to another point. Check this out. Where are we going? Here we go. So the the um, the bio. Black owned good. U.S. base, I don't know if people care. Handbags, jewelry, accessories, and more. We'll change that. Owners, candy, and ch nobody cares who you are. Okay. Okay? <laughs> we'll see you on the page. I'm sure y'all going to keep being whoever y'all are in the stories and all that kind of stuff. But we're wasting valuable real estate. Got it. Let's take out handbags, jewelry, accessories, and more, and we can change that to the number one affordable luxury handbag in the country. Mm. Let's take it out to mission driven. Let's take let's let's push it to empowering our community through affordable luxury. We've got to sell people here. This is important. This is this is all real estate here. So that when you say it's the number one affordable lux uh, affordable luxury brand, and then we start this new branding, they're coming on here for an experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yes, got it. Good, good, good. Um, also, I don't know, you can't see my, above black owned it says entrepreneur, and you're not an entrepreneur. This brand isn't, on, isn't an entrepreneur, it's a company. It's a company, okay, okay. that's right. Makes sense? So I just, I just want us to be really consistent with our messaging. In the minds of the people, everybody should say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody should say the same thing. Is this ain't like, yo, this, this, we need to keep that affordable luxury ringing in the head. And when you start saying, there are no black affordable luxury companies, there are people who follow you in conversation throughout their day and say, yo, there's really only one affordable luxury because you said it. Here's what's crazy. Mm -hmm. It might be, but you haven't found them yet. So you got to create the narrative. You got to create the narrative. When I was building my brand, Sleep is for Suckers, the t-shirt brand, it was the only brand geared towards entrepreneurship and anyone that's ever lost sleep doing what they love. Mm -hmm. And I pushed that narrative because I said so, that is so. I put in my bio, king of podcasting. Now, what qualifies me to be the king of podcasting and who's the judge? You said so. Because I said so. Yeah, that's so right. So whatever you say is so, but we gotta, we gotta create a narrative to push, starting with the bio. Mm -hmm. And once, once, once you guys are super clear on that narrative, the content that you create, you'll start coming up with themes and concepts around that particular narrative. Oh, yo, we need to do one as a as a, a a businesswoman with her bag. And we could do a video where she's taking out all the essentials. Oh, one that fits the laptop. Mm -hmm. 
or her fist the iPad. She got her phone. She got her keys. She got her own money. You feel me? If you're going yeah. into like, um, if you're he heavy in the LGBTQ, like, yo, there mm -hmm. needs to be a man with the bag rocking that joint. Right. Whatever narrative you're pushing, we need to one, figure out what the narrative is and then push that narrative. That needs to be the messaging. Make sense? Yes. And then, what yes you'll find, then what you'll find is it takes a lot of the heavy lift out of your marketing. Because right now we need people marketing for us. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. All right, all right. Um, any questions on any of that so far? Not that I can think of on my end. No, not not my, on my end either. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, any anything else? Anything else? What else? Our braids are still open to be picked. <laughs> I do have one. Listen, y'all have, have um, some more time. We have about another ten minutes here. Let's maximize this conversation. Let's rock it. Right, I do have one question. I'm not sure if you guys ever heard of him. Um, he's in a uh, he's in e-commerce, but he's in a different um, genre. Darius Cooks Williams. So he does. Um, he ha he sells like cookware and all that. Mm -hmm. He has a couple million followers. Huge brand makes millions of dollars. He goes live kind of doing the same thing, what we do, the behind the scenes. He's usually laying in the bed at night on Instagram live, a thousand people on there, no shirt on, you know, chest hair out, all that kind of thing, right? But he does not save the lives. So he gives that experience that we talked about, but he deletes everything. So if you didn't catch it, you miss it. What do you guys think about that? Is that a possibility or just scratch the whole- So I'm a fan of Darius. Is this, is this uh, him? Darius is this is him. Yes. That's him. Uh, that's him. First of all, let me just say that's ill. That like he's I and, and it is my first time hearing anything about it. But one, his page is private, and two, like you said, he just he like if you're on, you on, you catch it, you catch it. I yeah. think that's a narrative in itself. Um, yeah. Everybody ain't got access. That's a narrative, right. and I'm sure he's thinking of that and everything about his brand is saying that. Go ahead, Dick. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I followed Darius for several years. I've been to some of his restaurants. Let me say this. Um, Darius has, at this time, 686,000 followers. He is able to manipulate the market and his appeal a little bit differently than you are right now, being just a year or almost a year into your business. Okay, He's kind of paved his, paved his way. Now, he does a couple of things. Number one, he goes live like that and deletes the video because they're not all necessarily related to his brand. Number two, when he's cooking on live, he wants you to buy his cookbooks. So he doesn't want to leave the recipe there for you to just figure out from his live video. So if you saw it, you saw it. If not, buy the cookbook. And then number three, I believe he's also building his YouTube presence. So it wouldn't necessarily make sense for him to leave those type of videos on his uh, Instagram page. So the strategy there is just a little bit different. And I wouldn't say that you guys should model that same exact strategy because he has some proprietary information sometimes that he's sharing, his signature recipes that shouldn't stay. If I were his business coach, I would say they don't need to stay uh, up on his page. Your stuff, however, can stay. There's, there's not a reason. We want them to see the bags indefinitely. And then let me also just say this, because sometimes we look at what other brands are doing and we don't know the real picture behind the scenes. We don't know what's actually happening with the brand. I know many entrepreneurs, some of them are my clients, um, are now my clients or are trying to become my client who have millions of followers and they can't make six figures, <laughs> right? So just because sometimes we see these larger brands that are doing something and it looks like it's working for them, I would, instead of saying, let's do what they're doing, I would say, let's test a bunch of things and then study our own data and analytics and see how our own audience uh, responds to what it is that we're doing. Let's be inspired by it and let's try it. So building a business, marketing, and putting out new products, especially in the e-commerce space, this is a word that you want to write down and take with you. Okay. Testing. It is all about testing. Everybody wants to know, well, should we do this kind of marketing? I don't know. Test it. Should we sell at this price? 
I don't know. Test it. Should we do this, that, and I don't know. Test it. Your guess is as good as mine. Now, I can give you some feedback and say, this is what I have seen work in the past. And based on my experience as an entrepreneur, here are some great places to start that are probably a little further ahead than what you were thinking of your own on your own. But there is no one way to build a business. There is no one way to market a brand. There is no one way to produce or offer a product or service. It is about testing. But what has to happen before you start doing that is making sure you have as good of a hypothesis as possible when it comes to what should we drop, what should we be marketing by really, really understanding your audience. Who is your audience? You said, I believe, 35 to 55 years old. Are these super savvy people who you look at this audience and say, oh, they behave or they look much younger than what they really are? Or are they really on brand in terms of age? Or are, is this a really mature audience that says, you know, I just like a good old quality bag, baby. I don't need a whole lot. I don't need those big thousand dollar comma, you know, comma digit brands. Who are these women? What do they like? What are they watching on TV? What books are they reading? Do they get their hair done weekly? Are they concerned with everything or just the piece? Are these women who are really, really feminine or, the, or are these women who are not so feminine? We have to know everything possible, everything possible, and you can survey them. You can import your list and build custom audiences based on your email list and get an idea of what they like and what they're really, really into. That data, I'm all about the data and analytics. That data is going to say, well, do they want to see us in the bed with the kids? Do they want to hear about our pizza delivery? The answer is no. Don't nobody care about that. Just no more than they care yeah. about what your name is. Yeah, that's not like, there's like, oh my gosh, they're, uh, they're in the living room. I need a bag. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I was fired, Donnie. Um, uh, any, anything else? Anything else? We're oh, seeking yeah. investors. Are you guys still looking for businesses to invest in? Absolutely, we are. All the time. <laughs> yes. Well, hold up that bag. Hold up the custom bag one more time for people who just came in. We got to see this hotness. Y'all look mm. at this bag. This is this is the ancestry bag. And if you look closely, let's get the spotlight on them, babe. Oh, I can't. He look <laughs> um, oh yes i do hold on i might be able to do it hold on this is new guys so just just bear with me i don't know how to do it just yet so okay, okay yeah, yeah, hold on hold on i'm about to try it i'm about to try it i'm about to try it hold on hold on everybody calm down i think we're gonna do it i think no i don't i don't know how to do it i'm sorry i don't know okay. do all right hold this bag up a little hot yes so I want you guys to, number one, look at the craftsmanship that went into this bag. It's on me now. I want you to look at the craftsmanship that went into this bag. But number two is the ancestry line. Boom. So, you know, we love a good label. David, y'all know we love our high-end brands, but I also love my ancestors. I also love the ways that they've paid for us. And if we can pay homage through fashion and just walk around, this is like the ultimate Thank you, Maya Angelou. Thank you, Cicely Tyson. Thank you, Angela Davis. Thank you, Ruby Bridges. Like, if you are as connected to your background uh, as we hope you are in a luxury bag, like this, if you can wear Louis Vuitton all over your behind and Louis Vuitton <laughs> all over your back, we can pay homage to our ancestors by doing the same. I think it's so dope. Will it be ready for Black History Month, though? That's the real question. That what will happen? For, if the factory was not going to be closed for a month, it would have been. Uh, um, Chinese New so Year? They will, our first uh, bulk order comes in end of March, early April. We were considering for our um, VIP customers, the ones that are subscribed to our email and text list, to do a pre-sale. But that's something that we were unsure about. Um, but yeah, that that so so end of March, early April is what what we're projecting. Here's one thing we can consider. So our next, we might miss February, but mm -hmm. uh, we do have Juneteenth coming up. We have Mother's Day, we have Easter, we have Juneteenth coming up. You need to, and even as it, even for Valentine's Day, if I am you, I am just sending out some awareness emails as well. Like, hey, we miss you lovebirds this time around, but let me keep you like, tag, uh, bookmark this because this is what's coming. I would also go ahead and start collecting interest for it. 
So while you may not have the bags ready to produce and ship right away, all these people, there are hundreds of people who are plugged in right now. They are in the comments saying, we are loving this bag. Hold, hold on real quick. Hold on, hold on. Pull up, pull up wow. the bag. Pick up, pull up the bag one more time. I just need to. That's Somebody amazing. Said, I designed it. That like you guys did. have no idea how that makes me feel. Let, let me see that bag one time because uh, hold on, I gotta, I gotta. I, I'm doing this in a very um, unprofessional way. Let me do this because somebody said it is that Maya Angelou was spelled wrong. It is. Yeah. There's no U on her name. There's, There's no a U. U on her name. Maya Angelou. There is a U. Yeah, there is a U. Is there? Hold on. Let, let me look. Let's let let's look. look because um, this, yeah, there is definitely a U. There's on a there. U. Here's let's make sure. this anybody who's producing using names always, always run a Google search on the name. Oh, 100%. Never think we know it. it wow. Because her name is actually Maya Angelou, not Maya Angelou. And here's what's cool because. You need to hit your um, pr production team like, yo, hold yeah. on, yeah. slow right, down. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm and so we glad can. we're having this conversation, okay? Me too, oh, because they because have, if you have produced, <laughs> If you have produced a thousand of these bags with her name spelled wrong, right? The sales uh, would have went zero. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, y'all, listen, y'all got y'all money's worth right there, okay? Right there, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, good, check all good. the names. Just go through and check all the names yeah. and make sure we're on brand. Yes. Even if it looks like phonetically it's the right name, they may spell their name wrong. You know, some with two T's, two S's, where it's different than the original spelling. So that right there just saved you tens of thousands of dollars oh, on your first run of inventory. And thank you to the person yes. who bought that. Thank you to all Absolutely. to whoever bought it. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, good. All right. Um. Yes. Okay. I gotta know before we ended up like ladies. Yes. The very first feature on the Brain Picker podcast. Did it give what it was supposed to give for you? Oh, that and more. More. Yes. Way more. What's, yeah. what's your biggest takeaway so far? The marketing. The, yes. The marketing piece. When I, when I tell you we have, I have so, I'm, I'm a note taker. I've always been, I'm like a nerd like that. So when I tell you I have so many notes and I call, I say it's my homework. It's so much. Yes. <laughs> you guys have no idea. Like I know a lot of people come in contact with you and they say, oh, I'm going to execute. We're the people where if you call us this time next week, everything's done. Let's go. Yes. We're, we're, Let's we're, go. we're those people. We're the, we literally, I'm not just saying this, we listen to every single podcast, everything you guys do on Instagram, because regardless of the industry, business is the same. Yeah. yeah. Business is the same. So we take nuggets and implement everything you guys say. Amazing. Love it. Honored. 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 So we are excited about this series. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we absolutely. are excited. And this was the I perfect think this is absolutely amazing. This is historic. And I, I feel like those who are, are watching this and are, if you're just even remotely thinking about doing this, you have to, you do, have to do it. You have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. What's cool is this, obviously this will, this will last on YouTube forever. And um, mm -hmm. people are, yo, it's so dope. People wait till you really get on Fenty Rihanna level. They, the, we can always come back to the point where you spelled Angelou wrong. Yes. I can't wait it to see that story. It reminds me of the episode of Martin where they were outside, what was it, the Whitney Houston concert? And they spelled the shirt wrong? Yes. <laughs> we all just spelled the Whitney Houston shirt. <laughs> yes, yes. Speaking man, of Rihanna Fenty, though, uh, she is another luxury designer at an affordable price that stands true to her culture. So um, even looking at the, the brands like the Louis and the Gucci's and things like that, do your best to add market research and stay consistent in that market research. Doing market research at least quarterly. What are these new brands doing right now? Uh, looking at people who are operating where you are, but also looking at the Fenty's um, and the Rihanna's and just seeing what, what are they doing? What's working for them? How are they approaching Black History Month? How are they approaching uh, like Women's Day? How are they approaching Mother's Day? And let's take, let's take the obvious, like let's take what's already working 
and put our own spin on it, make it ours and win. We don't have to recreate the wheel. Uh, one big play that I'm gonna give you is to subscribe to these bigger brands. You should be subscribed to Fenty. You should be subscribed to other brands that you see. And, and, and even like brands like Fashion Nova, even though they're not a luxury brand, you can see how they execute a sale. Like they're really genius at executing a sale. Rihanna mm -hmm. is really genius at building a cult-like following of people who just want to support the brand because she's built this community-like environment. So subscribe, pay attention to the emails. Don't just get them and discard them. Pay attention to those emails, send it to your copywriters and your email marketers and say, hey, look, this is on brand for us. How can we make this ours? Yeah, that's the biggest thing um, that we need investors for is because right now everything is what, you know, we're doing everything. We're packing the orders, we're going live, we're selling, we're sending out the emails and the text. We're, you know, I'm doing the inventory, I'm designing the bags. We're literally doing everything on our own. And so the investors would help us to be able to build out that team. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll definitely uh, talk through that. I'm sure uh, just, just stay in touch with Donnie. She's over that department. But uh, we, we always with it, man. Especially. Oh, am I? <laughs> <laughs> am I? She's yeah, more... taking adv advantage of private capital. But also, um, have you ladies started to build any business credit yet? We have. We have. We, um, we had a line of credit. Maybe about six months in with Shopify, but that's 100% paid. It is paid. Yeah, I was going to suggest usually based on your volume, volume like that, Shopify should be extending you all kinds of uh, credit. And then also when it comes to like your marketing dollars on Facebook, applying for the Facebook line of credit, a lot of people don't know that that exists, but it does, where they can build you a net 30. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So, all right, ladies, thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Make sure if y'all in the chat, because we just seen the chat going crazy today. If you're in the chat, make sure you support. <laughs> Go to the page right now. Um, that, well, not the page, the website, tmcustomaccessories.com. Make sure you go to tmcustomaccessories.com. That will not be the name of the website that you're going to go to for long. Uh, <laughs> but right now... Go ahead and get it before, you know, right now they got $60 bags that are really, really nice. So uh, make sure y'all yes. go support. Uh, anything y'all want to say uh, before we get out of here? Follow us. Yes. Follow us. And when you hit the website, make sure you um, subscribe. So opt in to email, text message. Follow our journey. We document the process. And we want to say thank you so much to you, David and Donnie, because at the end of the day, you took a chance on us. And for us to be the first guests, we are honored. And we have to say thank you for that. Thank you very, very much. Thank no you. Not only did you change our lives, you changed our children's lives. So. Oh, man. Generations. <laughs> this is, look, this is, this is bigger than us. This yeah. is generational. Absolutely. This is generational Absolutely. for us. Wow. So and we appreciate you guys doing what you do for the culture. Good, for good. sure. We're happy for, for you, sure. man. Go out there and crush it. All right? We can't wait to see the growth. All right? Thank, Thank you. you. You're very welcome. Bye-bye, you guys. <laughs> All right, y'all. That, that was the first one, Donnie. That was the first one. I'm excited. So, if somebody wants to um, be on the Brain Picker podcast, and actually, we got another session coming up in like 45 minutes. Yeah, y'all want to come right back. Oh, uh, y'all want right to come back. right back. Y'all, listen. We are we are working today. Okay. So, Donnie, how can uh, how can I get on the pod? What do what, what they do? I don't know how to drop a link in the chat right here. Do you know how to do that? Um. Not exactly. We're going to figure it out, though. I see our private chat, but I don't see a chat to them. So what you can do right now, just to keep it really simple, go to my page or go to David's page on Instagram. And we both have... Oh, hold on. Did you see that? Look what I just did. I see. Look at that. This was hard. What are we doing right now? <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, that is awesome. You guys drop your comments about how you felt about this first episode because they're coming up and they're being featured in the video. Please, please, please go ahead and drop a comment. If you want to be featured on the Brain Picker podcast, then go either to uh, Sleep is the number four sucker. Sleep is four suckers. If anybody could drop this in the chat for me, that would be awesome. Sleep is four suckers on Instagram or Donnie, D O N N I, Wiggins, W I G G I N S underscore. You will find the link to apply for the Brain Picker podcast. 
It does not require that you are making any necessary, uh, necessarily any particular type of income. You do need to be in business. You can be in business part time, meaning you can have your business and be uh, employed as well. But you need to be actively prepared to execute the steps that we teach. Otherwise, what we doing? Yeah, you got to, you got to execute. All right. So listen, we're about to take a break. We're gonna come right back. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I don't know where the button is, but there's a subscribe button somewhere. The actual podcast, these will be releasing these episodes on an audio experience as well. It's not up just yet, but this episode will be released this week. So just continue to just 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 watch. Just wait on us. Just wait on us. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is at sleep is for suckers with the number four. And I am at Donnie Wiggins. There is no E in my name. D-O-N-N-I-W-I-G-G-I-N-S underscore. And be sure to come on on over there too. Just just tag us. In fact, hold on, pause for a second. Y'all gotta get a good screenshot of the very first one. Oh, get a screenshot. Screenshot. Post it on Instagram, please. Post it on Instagram. Donnie, do you realize we're gonna help thousands and thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs? Hundreds of thousands of hundreds people. Hundreds of like, thousands. You know I what's cool? We're mm -hmm. actually we're talking to one group, but it helps so so many people like we've got yeah. over 300 people watching it live yeah. in our information. Normally it's just a one-on-one -on -one session and yeah. uh, which is cool because they're either going to take it or not. But listen, if you come on the podcast, we are going to coach the crap out of you and mm -hmm. either you're going to take advantage of it or somebody listening is going to take advantage of it. So uh, I cannot wait to continue to grow and hear the stories from this. I yes. love it. I love it. Somebody said I had too much reverb on my voice, so we got to test that out. I don't know if it's them or us. It sounded good to me. We tested. We tested. Okay. Maybe it's just them. Maybe it's just them. This is hard. This is hard. I can I move am it around and all that. I, look, this is hard. This is hard. Yeah. So we're, we're about to get out of here, y'all. I love you all. Go execute, man. We will see y'all later. Peace. We're taking this to number one, too, baby. Yes, ma'am. You know what it is. <laughs> Be out of here.